So it's time to start assembling this bad boy. So, first step, we gotta slam down these spring seats on each one of the uh, valve guides. Slap this bad boy down. We gotta put our new valve seals on. Do that's all 16. So, everything's all nice and cleaned up. Just time to start throwing this together. So we've got all our uh, spring seats in. Made sure that they're all seated properly. Next step is going to be the valve seals. So, this is a 10 mil socket. We're going to use this to install them, tap them all in. So we want to make sure that it's not going to hit this inner ring. That's where it actually seals. We just want to be uh, putting force on the outer ridge of this uh, metal sheath. So, I'm going to be careful doing this. Make sure that they're going on square. We're going to pre-lube every single seat before we uh, start tapping the seal on. And uh, we should make quick work of this. So uh, I'll take a video of one or two and then the rest. Rinse and repeat. Same old, same old. Should also make note that sometimes there are multiple or there are two different types of seals in a kit. Some will be brown, some will be green. Uh, you want to make sure that you use the correct one for exhaust or intake valve. This is just a universal. They're all the same. It's pretty straightforward, super easy, anyone can do this, so let's just bang them out. This is not an ideal head to show on, and it's getting pretty dark out, so take our oil, go nuts with it. This whole thing gets covered in oil, so you don't have to worry about getting oil anywhere it shouldn't be. I'm going to put oil inside the seal. We have it on the stem there. We're going to push that on as far as we can by hand. I'm using a tiny tappy do. We don't need a giant ass hammer. You can see it's a little cockeyed, so we use the socket to straighten it out a bit. And once it's looking a little straight, start sending her home. And you'll feel when it bottoms out. It sounds a little different as well. So that's our seal. It's all the way down. If you're going with this tapping method, you want to make sure that you are doing this on a soft surface. We're doing it on a wood countertop, so we're not going to gouge the uh, important part of the head, the mating surface. If you're on anything else, throw it on a rag, something like that, paper towel, towel, anything. Just make sure you're not smacking on the concrete. Well, more oil you use, the easier it'll be. It's very important that you don't force these either. These little nuggets are super cheap, which means that they're super easy to screw up. It's kind of difficult not to hit the camera here. Boom, that's two. 14 more to go. So this is what they look like once they're installed. See they're damn near making contact with the spring seats. Most importantly, you can see that the seals are not damaged. You can see that we're trying to hammer on this outer gold surface. We do not want to touch the center green piece. That is a miniature spring there. And that's what seals it. So if you nick that, damage that, you have issues. You want to hit on the outside here, so make sure that the socket sits right on the gold. Once we get this in, we want to make sure that we uh, oil the valve stem when we stick it up from the bottom. And make sure you get some oil on this seal surface here. And you want to go gentle. When you're putting in the valves, you'll see pretty easy. Just things you need to pay attention to. So we'll use this as an example. So this one's not going on straight. So you always want to give it uh, little taps first. So I just get a pick. Pry up on the one side. And pops right off. That's only easy to do as long as you don't send the thing home. We're using little taps here to make sure it's straight. So it's off centered right now. We'll hit on the side that it needs to go down. And it straightens itself out. Again, if it's going on crooked, use a pick, pull it off, start again. If you damage it, you're going to burn oil. You're going to be that Honda guy. You don't want to be that Honda guy. here once it bottoms out that the pitch changes a bit that's how you know you're there
All right, so that's all the valve seals in. Our next step is going to be uh, throwing in the valves with the springs. So you have to sit the spring down onto a valve. And we have these retainers, which are the caps for the springs. The little, little hats. Then you have these tiny things called keepers. And these clip on the edge of the valves. It makes a cone. And as the spring will push up towards that edge, that'll create its own little wedge and that's what keeps the whole assembly together. These springs aren't super stiff. Uh, there are some, like the LS I just built. These things will launch themselves through the roof. So you do want to be careful. The worst part is getting these keepers on. I prefer this. The thicker the assembly lube or grease, the better for the keepers. Uh, we can put them onto a screwdriver. We'll tap that onto the valve stem and that will be enough to actually keep it in place. These are the worst heads to show on how to do this since they are just so deep down into the casting it's, its own little its own little time zone down there so that's not ideal but I'm sure we can figure it out so we've got this pretty well set up to do the springs the inners and the outers are for the intakes singles are for the ex exhaust why was that hard we gotta remember that we have our valves labeled number eight up here and then we can oh she needs a clean in again then we can start working our way down. We're going to do the exhaust today. Start working our way down 8 to 1. Because we just did our grinding. So we have all our valves machined so that they correspond with each seat. So once again, cannot stress enough. Whenever you're assembling an engine, go nuts with the oil or the assembly lube. Usually you do a break-in period anyway. So if you have a ton of break-in lube that doesn't harm the engine or pickup. Uh, it's designed to almost dissolve, and then your first oil change flushes all that out. Spritz the hell out of the valve stems so that the uh, valve will slide through the center. Once we get that part uh, all said and done, it turns into you need four arms to do this. But I'll try and show you guys the best of my ability how to put these little bombs on without exploding and eating a spring. Because that's that's frowned upon usually. We have free healthcare here in Canada, so I'm not too not too concerned. Alright, so once again we want to make sure that the valve, each valve goes back to the exact same spot it came out of. And this is all there is to a valve. We slide this through from the back. Then a spring goes on the top. Then you have your retainer. A little hat. That's your little spring sandwich. And at the very top of the valve you have these keepers. These are called the keepers, they only go on one way. They should only go on one way. Uh, they do create a little wedge so when the spring is applied to it, uh, it prevents the whole thing from shooting off and smacking you straight in the cornea. So once again, use all the oil you can. Just pre-lube everything. Jeez. Woo! The seal's pretty much rock hard because it's fucking minus a million in here. Alright. Important thing to note. Using oil is a, is a must when assembling these. Assembly lube is ideal for doing like rocker arms, valve train, and uh, holding the keepers in place once you uh, place them in. However, when oil touches this, this will almost dissolve. So if this is caked in oil and you're trying to get these keepers to stick onto the valve stem, if you type it with oil, your whole thing's going to fall apart. And that's the last thing you want or need. So, On the rear, we have our valves here. The way this tool works, this specific one, on the bottom side of the head, the valve is going to sit right on the face of the valve on the side of this valve spring compressor. And then on this side we have these cages. These will push down on the retainer of your valve spring. And then it has these open slots on the side for you to insert those keepers. And usually they're big enough, sometimes they aren't, and it's a whole struggle. So you can see how this works. Everything's adjustable on this side, this side. It's pretty much infinite adjustability. So play with it, see what works for you. This is an over center style. So once we get to a certain point, it should lock itself down. Not always the case. 
So we've got our valve through on the other side. Take our spring and retainer and try to sit it on there. As you can see, we have it clamped down. It is holding itself and you should be able to get those keepers in. However, that's not really enough room, so I'm going to adjust, reclamp. We should be set and good to go. It's exactly as frustrating as you think it could be. <laughs> so there we go. We have a good chunk of this valve stem sticking out now. So we can take those cone keepers. We're going to apply some grease to them. Slide it on. We're going to use a screwdriver to kind of adjust. And once you get them both in there, you want to try and center the retainer. If it's off to one side and you release it, chances are it's going to shoot this keeper off and it's going to peg you right in the cornea. So, frowned upon. You kind of align it with your hand, <clears throat> kind of align it with your hand on the entire spring compressor so you can get the whole centered here. When you release it, it should be pretty okay for you there. So, let's throw some grease on here. This is the hard part. For sure, 12 out of 10, this is the hard part. I don't know how I can show you guys, but we're going to take the keeper here and put some grease on it. So we have the grease on there. So as you can see, the grease right now is holding this keeper in. And we want to push down on it, make sure that it's seating perfectly. And that grease will hold it in its spot. And we can spin it around, and then put the other side on, and then we're there. I've seen people apply this to the valve stem. I like applying it to the keepers themselves. I just find that works better for me. Just want to point out this significantly more difficult when it's freezing cold out. As you can see, we just got that second one on here. It is sitting up. You want to just make sure that that's sitting down snug. You want to make sure that's fully seated. So now, it's when we want to center the valve spring compressor. This is super difficult when your hands are frozen. So as you can see, we are able to maneuver this around, so we want to keep it centered. And we want to release this, and it should seat just like that. And then once you get each one seated, you want to come by with a hammer, usually when you have them all in, and just give them a tab, make sure they're moving, not binding. So that's how you do it, that's your first one. Then you get to do all the other ones, fun times. The dual valve springs usually are a lot stiffer, and actually sometimes that's easier. This is not that difficult. This is the worst case scenario. Right now it's like minus 25 degrees Celsius. I'm bloody cold, my fingers are numb, but we're still making this happen. It's going together pretty well so far, so uh, I'm gonna bang out the next few. All right guys, we have uh, the head mostly assembled at this point. I went ahead and did the uh, intake side. Yeah, the intake side already with the rocker arms. So now we're gonna jump on the exhaust side. So pretty straightforward here. Uh, I have these all cleaned and organized, pre-oiled already. These are gonna be the three types of rocker arms you have. This for VTEC, obviously. Helps if I clean the lens. So this is the orientation that they're gonna be in. Uh, when you look at it from the top, you can see these two outer ones here. They curve in. So you wanna make sure that they're both facing the middle, and you can have your little dowel here. You kind of make a sandwich, and they'll sit like that as you uh, assemble it in here. Super easy. Again, grease is your friend. So we're going to lather up the rod, which only goes in one way. So you're going to want the front of the engine here where the accessories are in your crank pulley. You're going to want this cut out of the rod to land right about here. And then we have to install some pins that locks it into place. So we've already done the intake sides, so now we're going to throw the exhaust together. So uh, same thing, either side, that's the orientation they're going to be in. So I'm going to set you guys up here, throw this together, it's super easy. Um, maybe a bit tedious if you're impatient like me, but not terrible. So uh, let's set you guys up so you can get a better look here, throw this thing together. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and pre-lube everything. Take our rod, make sure it's going to go the correct way. Throw 
ton of grease on there. We can start threading this through. So you want to go nice and slow. You don't want to force this at all. Throw some oil in our new rockers. We want to start threading these in. Again, use as much oil as you can. I want to make sure that the face of these rocker arms is facing the right way. You want it up towards your cam. Also a good time to note, you want to make sure that you have these dowels in all of your rockers. So the middle ones, you can remove this dowel. The ones that will be on your left, you're going to have this tiny pin. These have a dowel as well. That can only go out one way. And the ones that are going to be on the far right, this has a spring applied dowel in that as well. This one does not come out, so pretty easy to keep these in the uh, right spot. Once we start getting to the end on this side, uh, you want to make sure that that rod still stays uh, lubricated with that assembly lube. Slam some more of that on. I guess important time to mention, you do want to make sure you have those lost motion pieces in before you start throwing your rockers on. That could be a nightmare. So that rod is entirely through, you want to make sure that none of these are binding. You'll see that the one on the far right is sitting up. All you have to do, take a screwdriver, push that plunger in, and then it'll sit right down. So we got that in, we want to make sure we put on our uh, dowels and aligning pins. I have to find mine. Alright, shoot some oil down there. Now we'll take our pin, we're going to drop that down. Let's pop those down into place. And that would be a good time to start putting in the plugs on either side that would uh, center this rod. So that's the hard part. At this point, I just have some more cleanup to do for these top plates. Uh, again, nothing too fancy. You just slap these on. You do want to make sure that they do have their dowels. Make sure that all the orifices are clean. And the only other, only other thing to note would be the camshafts. If you didn't mark which cam is which, uh, the one that has this slot on the end, uh, that's going to be your intake cam, and this will be what drives your distributor, so that's how you know which one is which. You don't want to mix these up, so you got a lot of work to undo. So slam that all together, nothing fancy there, nothing special. This is the only tedious part is the keepers and keepers on the springs and sliding this rod in. Uh, nothing too difficult, just need to make sure you have these in the right spot. It's throwing ahead together, nice and easy for you guys. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I'll try my best to reply to everyone and answer your questions. But, that's it for now. Head's almost together. Soon have a B16. So I think this should be pretty much it. So, next episode we start... Doing that kind of thing, you know. We got some parts show up, so start that in the morning. That's it for part one. Thanks, guys, for watching.